We've done the largest studies on meditation that have ever been done just because we have a community of 1,800 people that come to an event that are going to be getting up at the same time, doing the same thing, uh, pretty much eating, making the same food choices uh, in pretty much a big laboratory, right? And so our discoveries in working with 1,800 people in, in measuring brain waves, uh, bef uh, their brain function bef before and after the event, um, measuring their gene expression before and after the event. We're measuring uh, 2,882 metabolites in their blood. We're measuring DNA expression. We're measuring urine. We're measuring saliva. We're measuring uh, the energy of the room. We're measuring everything. And meditation in a sense that it's not in the traditional way. Um, what we do is we look at what really works. <laughs> you know, we're actually looking to say, well, that's something that we can actually see a change in. So we teach meditation three ways, to become familiar with your old self and to become familiar with your new self. That's what the word meditation means, familiarization, to become familiar with. So we use that model for change. To slow your brain waves down and get beyond your analytical mind is meditation. And you teach your body how to do that. And we've discovered a formula that, that simply makes it very easy for people to do it. You practice it, you'll get good at it just like anything else you practice. So, so to get beyond the analytical mind is another way to reprogram ourselves. And then meditation is really about getting beyond your body or disconnecting from your body, disconnecting from your environment and forgetting about time. And that is that eye of the needle where we begin to make the most significant changes. So we're data driven, you know, we're, we're really looking to see what it is. And, and when we see uh, brains respond in the same way, it helps me enormously to teach the material better. And so the more people understand what they're doing, and the more they understand why they're doing it, the more naturally the how becomes easier. And mm -hmm. nothing is left to conjecture. If nothing is left to superstition or dogma or even in spiritual, mm -hmm. you know, traditional words. Use science as the contemporary language to demystify that process. You need to give new people numerous times to overcome themselves and numerous times to connect sooner or later you'll start watching transformation right before your eyes. And so one of the cool things that we've discovered is that we have so much compelling data to suggest that you're greater than you think, mm -hmm. more powerful than you, no more unlimited than you could ever dream. We have compelling data to suggest that your nervous system is the greatest pharmacist in the world, that it makes drugs that work better than any drug in a drug store. A drug study is about 18 to 25% cause and effect causality. Our data is between 75 and 85% cause and effect. This is a person creating their own pharmacy of anti-inflammatories, their own pharmacy of anti-carcinogenic chemicals, their own pharmacy of uh, pain relievers. We're seeing this over and over again. So we have this incredible data that says that this is no longer pseudoscience. <laughs> this, is the real, this is really science. The side effect of a person's transformation is it has changed my belief in what's possible. I have seen people stand on the stage with stage four cancers that were in every single organ in their body that metastasized, and, and they have no sign of cancer in their body. And we have data that suggests that you put the blood of an advanced meditator in a uterine cancer cell, a pancreatic cancer cell, 70% <laughs> of the mitochondrial function in the cancer cell is diminished. And mitochondria is the energy packets of the cell. It's taking energy out of the cancer cell. It works perfect with what we're seeing with uh, uh, the testimonials uh, that, that uh, people are telling around the world. We've seen blind people see, we've seen deaf people hear, we've seen uh, people with spinal cord injuries walk again, we've seen uh, ALS change, we've seen all kinds of unbelievable health conditions change by a person simply changing the way they think, the way they act, and the way they feel. How long have you seen certain things last? Like, how much does the practice have to continue daily to sustain impact? Because I feel that you know, this isn't, as you know, isn't a one-off thing and that isn't what you're encouraging. Like this is the experience of when someone's coming to a retreat or an event, they're having this incredible experience, but then do you measure how people continue to practice? Yeah, and it's important. Take, yeah. yeah, it's super important for us. Um, uh, and of course we have mounds of data, but let's see if I can say this uh, as, as clear as I possibly can. 
When a person has that arousal, where they're feeling that elevated emotion, and their their eyes are closed, they're in a room with 1,800 people. There's music playing in the background. They're not eating. They're not smelling. They're not tasting. They're not moving about and feeling. On some level, they're having an inner experience, right? And the body is so objective that it's literally believing it's living in a new environment. And so that elevated emotion somehow tends to drag the body right out of the past into the present moment. So many people with uh, everything from eczema to uh, muscular dystrophy, when they have those events, there's a biological change that takes place in their body where they feel completely differently. Now, some people heal all the way. Some people are out of their wheelchair and they're walking again, but they're limping. And that doesn't mean it's over. It just means they made contact or they, they hit gold. And so there's varying degrees that we see. We've seen people for seven years work on a terminal health condition. It took them seven years to heal that health condition. Some people it takes two years, three years. Some people they do it in three months. We, there's no mm -hmm. uh, predictable menu that we can say it's this way. Now, when people have those more profoundly aroused states, it seems like uh, their change is much more immediate and much more permanent. Uh, but for the most part, we see people's response pretty dramatic. Now, it's also important to say that we have seen people heal from, from terminal cancers, stop feeling those elevated emotions and return to responding to the circumstances and conditions in their life and return back to the same personality. <laughs> the same personality is the same personal reality and their body's believing it's living in that same environment and they're feeling the same way and they're in the habit of uh, acting the same way and thinking the same way and lo and behold, uh, the condition returns. Uh,